I'm Ted Keyes, your host and top freight agent training expert here in Southern California. This topic comes from my 30 plus years of business, sales and freight moving success. Watch, learn and apply it. You'll move more freight efficiently, effectively, effortlessly and make more money financially. And call me at 626-309-9141 with any questions. Now explode your business with... Hey guys, hello and welcome to my Tuesday training call. Again, I'm Ted Keyes, your host and top freight sales, top freight broker expert here in Southern California. Today, I'll show you how to move more freight efficiently, effectively, and effortlessly so you make more money financially. And after the call today, go to my website, tedkeysonline.com to hear more of my podcasts, read more of my blog posts, watch more of my videos, and while you're there, visit my freight sales success store for top-notch freight moving products to explode your business today. And if you have any questions today, any questions regardless of what it is, or specifically, are you ready for my top producing one-on-one -on -one personal freight sales, freight broker training, then give me a call, Ted Keys. I'm at 626-309-9141. Today's training topic is this is when you call or email your freight prospects. Again, let me say that again. This is what, this is when you call or email your freight prospects. So for those of you that have gotten on my call today you obviously have received an invite to get on there if you look at that invite if you haven't already you'll see down there there's an attachment about the topics that we're going over today spelled out a little more clearly anyway just go ahead and go down there if you haven't already go ahead and print that out so uh, we'll go over those and again if you're wondering how do I get that attachment well just go to my website, tedkeysonline.com, on any page you're at, just upper right hand corner, enter your contact details. That will get you on my weekly email invite to my training call. Anyway, let's talk about this is when you call or email freight prospects. There are two main forms of communication in our profession. It's either the phone or email. I mean, yes, we have this thing called the internet that we communicate back and forth, that we can go to websites. But when it comes to communicating with your freight prospects, the two big ones, the two main ones are your phone and your email. Yeah, there are, you can text if you want, uh, but then again, how, how much information can, can you text? I mean, you're gonna get so much more just by emailing when it comes to attachments. You don't want, you don't want your, uh, your prospects texting you their load list. You want them to email it to you. So again, just real clearly, phone or email. Now the classic question, classic question I get all the time in freight sales or freight brokering is when do I use the phone or my email? And successful freight agents and brokers, guys, know that in the grand scheme of our profession, in the grand scheme of all this, this freight brokering, you use your phone and your email. I'm just gonna talk today about when do you use it, when do you use a phone, when do you use the email. But I'm specifically, I'm specifically talking today about when you make that first touch. Not only when you make that first touch, but those touches beyond that. What do I mean by touches? I mean actual contacts where you're actually communicating either verbally or your prospect is reading information that you just sent to them. Since you shouldn't leave, guys, if, since you shouldn't uh, give out an identical voicemail or an identical email, 
you must make a choice between the two. And that's what I'm going to go over today. What, when is it better to use a phone? When is it better to use an email? So on your contact there, I talk about five, uh, four tips. Today I'm gonna give you five tips on when to use either one. The first tip, the first tip is this. These tips, uh, let me back up. I'm gonna give you six tips today. The first tip is these tips are not set in stone. These tips are not set in stone. The reason why I say that is because you may, you may have a tremendous skill on the phone and that's all you want to do is talk on the phone. Now, again, to communicate and build a relationship on the phone, yes, absolutely. But you don't want your prospect or your customer telling you on the phone what their loads are. That's when emails come in handy. So that's why I say these tips are not set in stone. And again, that's tip number one. <clears throat> the key here is continual contact, continual contact, continual contact with your prospects, continual uh, contact with your customers. Again, when you turn your prospect into a customer, the goal is to be continually in contact. If you have the mindset that, hey, hey, I've got their credit app, I've got their profile sheet, I've got them into the system, all they have to do is keep uh, you know, sending me their load lists or their freight lists or this load here, that load there, that's not going to happen. Again, the key is continual contact. Continual contact with them via phone, via email. And remember, it all it, it depends on what your skill is. Now, I'm going to give you some generic uh, tips today. But again, none of this is set in stone. So that's tip number one. Tip number two is this. Just like a phone call, just like a phone call, Always, always, always personalize your emails. What do I mean by that? Well, just, just at the bare minimum. Don't ever send out an email and say, what are you moving this week? When I say personalize it, every single time, every email that I send out or I respond to, I always, always, always put, the, put my prospect or my customer's first name at the minimum. Not only do I put their first name, I'll even say, if it's morning, I'll say, Jim, good morning. Then I'll write out my email. John, good afternoon. Whether it's morning or afternoon, I'll put that in there. That's personalizing your email. If you just send an email to a prospect or a, uh, you know, a customer and say, what are you moving this week? How do they even know where it's coming from? I mean, there's so many people that don't even have a signature at the bottom of the emails that they send out. So always 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 personalize your emails another reason why you want to personalize it because so so many folks don't personalize it the goal here is to stand out the goal here also is to address them by name why because the sweetest sound to a person's ear is the sound of their name now i i, I stress the word sound in this case just seeing their name in an email, it has the same effect. Somebody's addressing this to Ted. If, they, if somebody addresses an email to me, Ted, I'm going to pay more attention to it uh, compared to what are you moving this week. And a lot of times I see that, uh, you know, my competition will respond to like a group email and they won't even refer to my to my prospect by name. I, again, this is a group email where if you respond, you know, and everybody is uh, uh, carbon copied in there, if you respond, everybody on that list is gonna see that. So tip number two, tip number one is these tips aren't set in stone. Tip number two is when you're emailing, always personalize it. And I say that uh, in reference to an email because my goal is when you're talking to somebody, you're already saying, hey, John, good morning. I mean, I'm assuming that you're already saying that. But when it comes to emails, we get so dang lazy. And when you get lazy, you're just, you're blown off just like, you know, 80% of that list. It's the ones that really put forth the effort to get their prospect and their customer's attention that actually survive and get their load. So tip number two is always personalize your emails. Tip number three, 
Okay, tip number three is this. A call, a phone call, always beats an email. A phone call always beats an email. Why do I, why do I say that or what do I mean? If you want to have the biggest effect on a prospect or a customer, and again, my rule of thumb is one touch a week. One touch a week, one contact a week. If you want to have a bigger effect on your prospects, on your customers, call them. Now, you can email them once a week, but how do you know if they even read the email? When I say one touch, whether it's by phone or email, just because you send out an email and they don't read it, that doesn't count as a touch, okay? How do you know they read it? Well, you really don't know that they read it. That's why I say a phone call always beats an email. Now, I get, I'm get i pretty good at emails. I mean, that's why you're on my call today. You're on my call today because I emailed you and you actually opened it. So I'm pretty good at sending out emails, but it's taken me a long time to get good at it. And, it, and it's no different. You've got to get good at using the phone. Emails are no different, but a call always beats an email. And one of the main reasons why is because you know that you actually spoke to your prospect or your customer. You know what you said to them, all right? You can write out the best email in the world, but if it didn't go through or if, you're, if your prospect didn't read it, it doesn't mean anything. And what does that mean for that week? It means that you made no touch that week. So a call always beats an email. And that's why I said on tip number one, these tips are not set in stone. Tip number four. Tip number four is what time and what day do you send out your emails? What time and what day do you send out, out your emails or do you make your phone calls? One thing, one point that I'm really, that I'm specifically, that I'm specifically making in this tip is this. Later is always better. Later is always better. What do I mean by later is always better? What I mean is later in the day or later in the week. You want to make that phone call or send out that email later in the day. Why? Because when somebody gets in on Monday morning, they are not going to be concerned with your email. Your email that's not even addressed to them, that's not personalized, that's saying, what are you moving this week? They are going to blow that off like nothing. Always later in the day. I mean, if these folks are managing a warehouse, they're not thinking of your email, especially early in the morning or early in the week. Later is always better. What do I mean by later? I'm talking about later after, two, say, 2 p.m. When I send out my emails every week, again, let me say that again. When I send out my emails every week, it's either on Tuesday or Wednesday. Not only is it Tuesday or Wednesday, but it's Tuesday or Wednesday after lunchtime. That, that's my rule of thumb, okay? Now, if you want to send yours out 8 a.m. Monday morning, you're more than welcome to. But I know I, I send it out then because I know that it, it has a better opportunity, better probability of getting opened little later in the week and a little later in the day. So, and again, that counts for phone and email, but especially email. Now you can call at 9 a.m. Monday morning, and if you get through, hey, go, you know, talk to your customer, build that relationship, at least you know that he's on or that she's on the other line. But with an email, you just don't know. That's why I'm giving you the tip to, as I said, <coughs> later is always better, meaning later in the day and later in the week. Tip number five is when you ask for their loads, when you ask for their loads. And when you ask for the loads, it can be done with the phone again or an email. But let me just say this. 80% of your sales, 80% of your loads initially with a new customer, new prospect will come between your fifth and your twelfth contact. Let me say that again, guys. 80% of your loads will come between your fifth and your twelfth contact. What do I mean by that? What I mean is that 80% of your sales will come between your fifth and your twelfth contact. And again, that means phone or email. But just be aware of what I said earlier. How do you know if an email has gone through? 
you don't. So, that's why I said earlier, a phone call always beats an email. But these are standard sales statistics, and it, and it applies to most industries where you have to co continually call back, excuse me, <coughs> or you have to continually call your customer and receive their business. So when it comes to when you ask for their loads, well, you're in our case, you're always asking for their loads, but in, in, our, in our situation, those loads, those initial loads, will come between your fifth and your twelfth contact. And again, I'll go back. A phone call beats an email. If you want to speed that up, okay, and know that your contact counts for something, use the telephone. Use the telephone. The last level, last tip that I'm going to give you is the level of your freight prospect. Where are you in that relationship with your freight prospect? How well do you know your customer? All right, how well do you know your customer? Well, if you use the phone every time you make a contact, you're gonna get to know them better and quicker. If you wanna spread this out, again, using emails, using emails, you just have no idea, okay? You just have no idea. So. The level of your freight prospect. If you want to increase your level significantly and get their business faster, use the telephone. Use the telephone because with an email, you just never know. Hey, as I said earlier, you could you could devise the best email in the world, but whether they read or read or not, who knows? How do you know that it went through? Another tip. Let me just add on uh, tip number seven. I, I said this earlier, but Whenever you make contact, whenever you make contact with a prospect first time, always use the telephone. Always use a telephone. Just because you went on the internet and got a shipping decision maker's email and, you're, and, and your mindset is, I'm just going to email him because Ted said I can. Ted said it works. Don't ever email a prospect without calling them first. Don't ever, ever email a prospect without calling them first. And really think about it. Think about the emails that you get, okay? Think about the ones that you actually read. Typically, the ones that you read are the ones that you have some familiarity with. So, in, in, in the case of you building a relationship with your prospect, You've made that initial phone call, okay? And even in my Freight Sales Success Guide, I go over with you the first email that you are to send to your prospect. I, I go over that with you also in that first one-on-one -on -one training that you have with me when you actually join our team. However, <clears throat> your goal, or it's not even a goal, it's a must. You've got to call first. Don't ever email somebody that you don't know. Why? Because they don't know you and there's a 99.9% .9 chance that your email is going right to spam or it's going right to the trash. Great, great topic again today. This is when you call or email your freight prospects. This is when you call or email your freight prospects. Thanks for joining me today. Today, again on my Tuesday training call, pleasure having you. My hope is that you take this knowledge and truly, truly apply it because it is so important. This is what you must do in your freight sales business. I'll be, a, I'll be here again next week on my Tuesday training call, same time, 2 p.m. Pacific time, 5 p.m. Eastern time on my Tuesday training call. Guys, thanks, take care. I'll see you all again next week on my Tuesday training call. Bye-bye. When you arrive at my Freight Sales Success Store today, you'll see a number, a host of products available there for purchase. First one you'll see available is my flagship product. That is my Freight Sales Success Guide, typically for beginner and struggling freight agents. If you're searching for that daily motivation, daily motivation to set goals, to achieve them, to pick up the phone daily and uh, connect and build relationships with the marketplace, then opt for my freight sales success quotes. 
And if you're searching for those specific skills, and there are many skills, many individual skills required to be successful in this profession, then opt for my freight sales success skill. I highly recommend each one of these products available for purchase today in my freight sales success store. Do you have any questions again? Do you have any questions about today's call? Or more importantly, are you ready for my top producing one-on-one -on -one personal freight sales, freight broker training? Then give me, Ted Keys a call. I'm at 626-309-9141. Great topic for today. Take these skills, apply them. You'll be amazed at what happens to your results.